You wake up today like you woke up yesterday and you choose to wear your fancy files shirt like the day before and the day before that and probably tomorrow as well. You make a choice, a choice to support, a choice to encourage, and a choice to share your favorite podcast with the world. And when, finally, you get confronted with the fact that you've been wearing the same shirt over and over and over, and someone finally pops up the question, will you ever stop wearing that shirt? This message was brought to you by Christian Service. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and potentially good night, and welcome to the Fancy File Podcast. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, dear. Well, I forgot my next line, but that's okay. I am your host, Greg the Scott, and I have with me today as part of my co-host panelists. Panelists? Can I say that word? Yes, because I just did. So to my right and your right, depending how you're looking at this, I have with me the Ezrasaurus Rex. Now, let me tell you a bit about the Ezrasaurus Rex today. Go ahead and tell us. This man has got an incredible stash going on, and I like it a lot. Yeah, it's growing on me. (laughs) It's growing on me, too. Not actually on me, but I, I think it looks good. How are you doing, Ezra? I'm uh, doing very well. Had a nice uh, nice sleep last night. Very good. Well, con- congratulations. You're the only Thank you. one of How us. How are you doing, Greg? Me? You know, I'm I'm a survivor. Good. Okay. I survived. I don't know what I survived yet, but I did. And I'm still here. I mean, you survived uh, the, the COVID panic and lockdowns, eh? You, so far. You, so so far. far. It's not done yet. That's fair. Okay. Don't. You haven't don't died it. yet. No, no, don't ruin it. This we'll just, you know, no spoilers or anything like that. We'll just we'll we'll just ride it out. Fair enough. Fair yes. Enough. But but having said all that, I am doing quite well. Thank you very much. Also with us, uh center stage, some slightly to my left. She's definitely not center left, by the way, people. <laughs> I give to you the Melanie. Welcome, Melanie. Hey. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I think I'm good. I I, I think so. Do I seem good? Yeah. yeah you good. have Always. a nice hat. Thank you. Someone finally complimented it's that. It's a beanie. Peak performance of man, Greg. Okay. <laughs> 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 if thou sayest. Wow. Uh, so, so glad uh, to have you guys listening. And by the way, thank you very much for all those of you who t- tune in. Specifically, thank you, Mom. <laughs> Shout out to my mom. Got to do that. Uh, Hi, Greg's who, mom. Who listens uh, uh, regularly. So, mom, why don't you just write on in those comments, say hi to everybody. We'd like to hear from you. Uh, but, yes, everyone, thank you very much. And for those of you who are new to the Fancy File podcast, uh, we are a Christian ser- part of Christian Service Ministry. Um, and so we, if you're like, well, what is Christian Service? Well, it's in the name. We're Christians. And we uh, we service, and we like to, we service we service what we service Christians. <laughs> yes. That's it. We service Christians, um, and in part of servicing Christians, we do a podcast. Hopefully, it's a blessing to you, uh, and will help you in your growth, help you grow in spiritual maturity. So, uh, if you've stumbled across this, we'd invite you to like and subscribe on the yep. YouTube channel. Uh, what is it exactly called? Uh, if you want to search us up, this is Christian Service Church, the YouTube channel, and uh, you're listening to the Fancy Files podcast. Yeah, so like and subscribe. We need more of your likes. 
and subscriptions. Also, I don't know if you're aware of this, but we have merchandise. We've actually had merchandise for a while. Yes, we do. I think a few of us were surprised by that. We won't say who, but it's there. Yep. We have a Tumblr. And for those of you who hear the word Tumblr, we're, we're not, not talking about the blog site. Nope. We're not talking about the Batman mobile. Was oh. that called Tumblr as well? Yeah, that's the model of the tank, I think it was. Right. So we do not own a tank. <laughs> I would really like it if we did own a tank with like Christian service fancy file on the side. Just roll around and just run over the false doctrine. Just plow it down. Mm. Okay, no, we have a tumbler, meaning we have like a coffee cup. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the ounceage is, but just look it up. Just in, go into About Channel and yep. you should see merch. And, uh, and we have actually, we have t-shirts, we have sweaters. If you yep. really like the Fancy File podcast and you just have to believe, yep. you just have to believe, then you just order on the website i think it's bit. teesprings isn't it, it well, yeah probably we can um, maybe post it in the uh well actually it's yeah, already it's on, always in the link oh, it's, it's in the link, link. Okay. so just look it up and mm -hmm. a few of us uh, are wearing the sweaters and yep. it's a brand new merch actually it was recently designed by uh mr mick germain himself well, uh, unfortunately he's not with us today but uh we we very much miss the mickey mickey yep. if you're listening we love you and we miss you Nicholas. please come back <laughs> You have a home here, Fancy Files. It's like he ran away. Baby, it's like we, we opened the door and he and he took off. It's like, where did he go? Come back. Come back, Mickey. Okay, Mickey, enough come being, back. Enough being ridiculous. Now, you can get the Fancy File merch in either black or red. I would recommend get it in black because we all know what happens to red shirts. Yeah. They don't make it. But that's only in the OT. Like the, o, the OC. The original series? Mm -hmm. TOS. Yes, TOS. That's a Star Trek reference. If we're getting too nerdy for you, well, that's too bad. We're allowed to have a bit of nerdiness at the beginning. But yes, please buy the merchandise, uh, support us, and, and you get continue to get great content from amazing panelists. Agreed. Agreed. We're all in agreement. Amen. Okay, so uh, we are in a series going through Colossians chapter 3. Now, we're not reading all of Colossians, but we're reading enough of it. And really, we've been talking a lot about identity. Uh, so we're going to continue with that. Uh, we, we read verses 1 to 3. So I, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask, uh, usually we ask Mick, but today we're going to ask Ezra, the Ezra Soros Rex. Don't call me Rexy. Or do we call you duty, Re sir. Or do we call you Rexy? No. But we're calling you Rexy anyways. Nah, everyone needs a stage name. It's like it's a part of his, like, you know, this whole persona, Rexy, don't call me Rexy. That's great. It's part of the name. Okay, so you're going to be reading from Colossians chapter 3, uh, and verses 1 all the way to verse 4, because that's where we're going to stop for today. All right. Uh, I'm reading Colossians 3, 1 to 4. I'm using the King James Version, but yes. you can feel free to follow along with whatever version uh, you happen to have with you at the moment. KJV. KJV. Go. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Colossians 3, verses 1 to 4. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. How'd that feel? I usually ask Mick that. How'd that feel? It's always good to read the word. Amen. Right. How did it feel to read it from the King James Version, though? Uh, well, as I always say, Greg, uh, if it's good enough for the apostles, it's good enough for thee. For thee. But how did it feel? It felt like I was reading the inspired word of God. Oh, okay. <laughs> for those of you listening, no, we're not King, you know, King James only. We're just, having, we're just having some fun. All right. All right. Serious mode now. Now we've flipped the switch, and now the silliness is gone. You, you actually can literally hear it leaving us. Ah, there it goes. Okay. <laughs> Um, so we've been going uh, verses 1 through 3, and it seems to be a theme. We're talking a lot about identity for the Christian. The sad fact is a lot of Christians do struggle with identity. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't want to, like, rehearse uh, everything that we've said, but but there are some things, though, like, quickly. Like, the Bible talks about how we're risen with Christ, uh, how we're seated with him uh, at the right hand of the Father, that we seek those things above, how we are to set, uh, set because of 
who we are in Christ. We set our affections on things above, and also that we're we're dead in Christ, and 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 our life is hid with God. Now it's interesting because the last time we were talking, we were talking about how we are dead in Christ and and what that means for us. Mm-hmm. Now this is where if you're reading this for the first time, it's like, well, you're you're dead, but now in verse four, you're going into, well, now we're talking about being alive, and now this is. This is where Bible study gets interesting because, like, well, one minute you're telling us we're dead, and now you're telling us alive that we're alive. But first, we know that we're not talking about actual physically being dead. It's it's talking about how our old life and everything that we were is is done away with. How because of what Christ did at the cross, how for our putting our faith in Him, being born again, then that is what which we were is gone in the mind of God, and that is so important to remember as Christians because. You know, we're going through this life and there's so much thrown at us, you know, and, and molding us into what into uh, shaping our, our thoughts into who we should be. That if we don't read the word of God, if we don't turn to what Christ says about us, then we can walk in, in defeat. We can have all sorts of problems and issues and, and which a lot of people do, unfortunately. So we need to overcome. We need to read the word of God and allow the word of God uh, to change our minds, to renew our minds, it talks about uh, in Scripture. So going into verse 4, Paul then continues unpacking more about who we are in Christ. And it's actually very exciting because, you know, it, it, this whole, okay, we're seated with Christ. We know that. Okay. But we're still here. <laughs> we're still here on this earth while this is taking place. Uh, you know, setting our affections above. That is still, that's hard because we're here in this world and, you know, talking about being hid in Christ and and how we're dead in Christ. And we know these things to be true, but we're still here. We actually don't physically see Jesus. Um, But now in verse four, when he talks about Christ, who is our life? And this is where I really want to focus on today. When, who is our life shall appear. Here's where it gets so exciting. We don't serve a dead Savior, and we know that. We know in the res- we believe in the resurrection. We don't serve a dead Savior. The reality of the second coming, the resurrection, Christ is alive. He is alive, and he is in heaven. Heaven is a real place, by the way. If you don't believe that, you have accepted something that is not true. Heaven is an actual place where Christ is at the right hand of the Father is an actual location. Uh, where is it exactly? Why? Well, I can't really tell you. It's not like, you know, second star to the left or whatever. Mm-hmm. Straight on till morning. Right, straight on to morning. Uh, in the spiritual realm, it exists. People who die and who are there are conscious and aware of their being in heaven. For the Christian, uh, if you were to die right now at the moment of listening to this podcast, you would go to be with the Lord and be conscious of the fact that you are there with him. But again, for us who are alive on this earth, Knowing that he obviously exists, but we don't see him. We see him by faith, but we don't actually see him according, we'll say according to the flesh, according to our senses. But that's all going to change one day. Christ, Jesus Christ will come back to this earth. And I believe in the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. I believe that uh, at any moment the trumpet of, of God can sound and that Christians will be resurrected up to be with the Lord. The dead in Christ will rise first. We who are alive and remain shall be caught up together to be with the Lord in the air. He's coming for his church. And we also know he is physically coming back to this earth to set up his kingdom. So for us, that him coming back actually has a huge part to play in our identity. Mm. It has a huge part to play in our identity. Uh, and and Paul is kind of showing like a different aspect of our identity in him. So one thing I love about all of this is that all of this speaks to our relationship with Jesus Christ and how important that is to our identity. It is so important that we develop a deep-rooted, authentic, real, life-changing relationship with the Lord. Because if we don't do that, none of this is going to make sense. They'll just be nice things to read, but you're just going to be a weak Christian who isn't really going to be overcoming in, in these truths. You're still going to be getting pulled down by all sorts of stuff, pulling at you, thoughts, 
attacks of the enemy, the world pulling at you, people saying things, you're going to be easily pulled down. But if you have that life-giving, deep, authentic relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you're abiding in him. That doesn't mean that those things aren't going to pull at you. Oh, no. Don't think for a second that you come to Jesus and you're having a real relationship with him. Everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I'd like that to be true. That's not true. Actually, the deeper you go with God, the more it's going to get rough. Mm -hmm. But, 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 but you are connected to Christ. Mm. And there will be victory. Mm. You will be able to to go on that path to overcome all those things that will come and attack you and tear you down and live out what we've been reading where you can. Like if you're abiding in Christ, you're in the word, you're seeking him, you will be able to put your mind on things above. You'll be able to seek those things that he says, seek those things above, not on the earth. Mm. Do any of you guys want to comment on that? No, I, I absolutely agree. I think it's really important that uh, as a Christian, we recognize that, um, when we come to Christ, our, our life as we envision it, our life as we desire it, is dead. Christ has bought us at the cross, and it's, it's important that we, we have that anticipation that he's coming. I mean, in, in the Gospels, Christ gives many different parables where he's talking about servants who are left in charge while the master's gone, and this servant... Uh, says, you know, my, my master's not coming for you know, however long. Uh, I'm just going to gonna do what I want. And he abuses his fellow servants. He doesn't take good care of the property that was put in his charge. And when the master comes home, he's severely punished because he did not do what he was expected to do. And why? Because he expected that he had plenty of time. You know, my master's taking his time. I'm going to do what I want. And you can tell that that, like, in the life of a Christian, a Christian with that attitude, oh, Jesus isn't coming back. I'm going to eat, drink, be merry, do whatever I want. And, you know, right when I'm about to die, that's when I'm going to, you know, turn my life over and, you know, make sure it's squeaky clean. Or I'm going to wait till, uh, you know, after college to focus on my, my walk with God. And mm. no, like, that's that's not a good approach. You can tell that that Christian... Or that that individual is not sincere with their faith, right? I mean, look at this verse. It says, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. And, and the question for you, you dear, dear Christian, is, is Christ your life or is he just an accessory? Hmm. If Christ is your life, Amen. you can't make that excuse of, oh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to wait till after college or... I'm going to wait till I'm married, or I'm going to wait till this. I'm going to wait till that. You can't put it off. If you're putting it off, Christ is not your life, and you need to reevaluate. Wow. Amen. That's good. Okay, continuing with verse 4. Christ, and, and I do want to dive in more on this, but when Christ, but I want to read the full verse. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then ye, you also appear with him in glory or sorry then shall you ye also appear with him in glory that is a part of your future yep that is a part of your future i think now i'm not broad brushing i i know that i have to be very careful when i explain things because if i don't explain it properly People are going to look for loopholes. Ah, oh, you said this and you didn't say this. That's like easy, tiger. Come on, man. Okay. I think part of Christians who struggle with identity, there's not all of it, but some of it. Okay. And we've looked at quite a bit. But if Christians don't know their future, they can really struggle with the present. Yep. So and that's not to say uh, names, dates, and uh, mates. That's no. not what we're referring to here. Names, dates, and who? Mates. mates mates okay oh okay yeah very good captain yeah. it's not the captain but we're, we're not talking about uh you know fortune teller future here we're talking right. about your destiny with christ you knowing where like what christ's plan is as the like for the whole body exactly. not exclusively for you yeah if you like if you have struggled with uncertainty for the future just in your everyday life you know how overwhelming that can be and you know how that can affect 
your like just day to day living, right? Uncertainty, fear of the future, fear of the unknown. That's going to affect how you respond. It's going to shake who you are. And then that will impact, you know, your identity. You have a crisis situation. Now, Christians still struggle with all sorts of things. We're going to struggle with, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. You lose a job. You don't know what's going to happen. That's terrifying. You know, if you can't pay the bills, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. Absolutely terrifying. But ultimately, for the Christian, their future is secure. And in that future is glorification with Jesus Christ. In that future is ruling and reigning with Jesus Christ. In that future is being with him forever. We have a future in Christ. And maybe some people have a hard time exp- like looking into that because they don't want to focus too much on them. And I get that. But, but. It's a big but here. If the word of God is telling this to us, that means we have to take it seriously because God wants us to know this. Mm-hmm. He wants you to know your future in Christ. Yep. And that brings security. Mm-hmm. That brings confidence. So when you're seeking God, when you're having that deep-rooted relationship with him, you're abiding in the Savior, it's not just for the here and now. Mm-hmm. It's for the future as well. You will be with the one and see the one that you worship. So when you're comparing all these identities and all these things that you can embrace and whatever it is out there, none of that compares to the glory and the wonder and the beauty of knowing Jesus Christ because all of that is temporary. Everything else is temporary. Mm. It's foolish. It's trash. Yeah, it's garbage. Garbage. Get rid of it. Because that isn't going to bring you to a future. It actually, in some cases, will destroy you, mm-hmm. depending on what it is. Yep. Mm. So, if you're a Christian today, and you're listening to this, you're born again, you're saved, you know you're saved, without a shadow of a doubt, you have a future in Jesus Christ, not only on this earth, but into eternity. Mm. Yep. That means, that means, that means, that means, that means resurrection. Amen. Yep. That means that for you, yes, you may die. You're going to come out of the grave and you're going to be given a new body. A new body in Christ. Or the rapture. I believe in the rapture. Mm-hmm. That in the, you know, It says in 1 Thessalonians 4 that there's going to be some who are alive and remain at the coming of the Lord will be caught up. In the twinkling of an in eye. In the twinkling of Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, we not all die, but we shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Wow, there's nothing on this earth that can come close to offering that to you. Nope. Whatever it is, no matter how pleasurable it is or how exciting it is or how fun it is or how popular it will make you, none of that comes close. Yep. Not even the same ballpark, same league, same team, same city. It doesn't even come close to comparing mm-hmm. to all of this. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Can I say something? Oh, yeah. Okay, so (laughs) this made me think of a verse in Romans. So Romans 830. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Amen. And so when you were talking, it made me think about if he was able to save me. He's he's he was he was and is sanctifying me, and so I know that he will glorify me, and so it just made me think of this verse, and it just gives us so much peace when we go through hardships, and we know that we have a hope, we know that this is not our end, that we have, that we're going to be with Christ, either if it's we get um, raptured or if we die, we know that we have a hope beyond this world, because if we look at this world. Boy, is it discouraging. It's so discouraging. Um, I wouldn't want to be a non-Christian in these days. Like, it's Mm. so discouraging to not have a hope and um, to just, like, I don't know how people do it. So I'm so thankful for this hope. Yeah, it's hard to live this life as a Christian. 
mm-hmm. with hope. Never mind yeah. as a non-Christian without hope. Yeah. No, of course. And I think uh, another aspect of this that's really encouraging is not only do we have security just in the fact that, hey, no matter what happens to us down here, we know that we will be resurrected with Christ. We know that we will be with him and we will have eternal life with Christ. Mm. Um, I, I'm reminded also of, of Christ while he was here on earth. He said, hey, seek the first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, right? So keep your eyes on the kingdom of God. Keep your eyes on that resurrection that's coming for you, Christian. But mm. all these things, like if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these other things, which in context had to do with you know, worries about, like, shelter, worries about clothing, worries about food. Christ guaranteed, hey, if you're seeking after me, I will take care of you. All these things will come. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sit there and be anxious over your food. You don't have to be anxious over what you're going to wear. You don't have to be anxious over your health because you know that Christ will care for you. Yes, you're going to get sick. Yes, you might get injured. Yes, sometimes the budget's going to be tight. Yes, sometimes there are disasters that destroy your home. But God is a heavenly father. He is the perfect father. And if our trust is put in him and if we're seeking after his will, he will provide what we need. Not to mention that if the church is functioning as it should, the church will gather around others within the church that are in need and will help them. Mm, That's good. We're never alone in our walk. (coughs) Thank you guys for your comments. Um, Now looking at, there's there's a few things here that I see I I want to like dive in on. One, it says that Christ is our life. Mm. Okay. And then the second, it talks about us appearing with him in glory, meaning us being glorified, our future resurrection, which I alluded to. And, Okay, so before we really dive in to, like, these specific things, and just thinking about all we've been talking about, about who we are in Christ, seated with Him at the right hand of the Father, uh, that we're hid in Christ, that we're dead in Christ, and then how we should, you know, respond to it. How does knowing these things, how will this, like, knowing these truths, how will this help change us? How will it help us in our walks? Well, going back to the, uh, the, the parable I referenced before, right, about the, the terrible servant, um, if we know that Christ is coming back for us and we know that he's coming imminently, which means any, any moment now, we don't know. It could be five minutes from now. It could be five days from now, five weeks, five months, five years, 50 years. We don't know. But it could be soon. It could be right at the doorstep. Knowing that he's coming, expecting his return, and being excited for it, and making it our life. This is my life, is to be with Christ. Our, our whole perspective, our whole lives should change. Our whole lives should be focused and built around Christ's return. And, you know, if, you, if your life is built around Christ and wanting him to be pleased with you and knowing that when he comes he you he has rewards for those who are are good and faithful servants i don't want to be disappointing to him yeah when he comes i want to be i want to hear that well done good and faithful servant i'm not doing it for the reward i'm doing it to please him but the reward helps you know mm. it's not bribery mm. like god doesn't bribe people to behave What he says is, I will reward my faithful servants. Mm -hmm. He will. and It's a promise of God. And when we know he's coming soon, that should change our attitudes. Mm -hmm. It should change our behaviors. Mm -hmm. Not to bash on those that don't believe the rapture is coming before the the tribulation, but... I'm one of those people, but I love you all. (laughs) We all love each other. (laughs) Or or even those that don't believe in the rapture at all. Mm -hmm. But does that, like knowing that he could come any moment, does that not change your perspective that, hey, I need to smarten up and get ready to go? Like, I can't, mm-hmm. I can't be twiddling my thumbs. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like there, like Paul says, there will be Christians that get into heaven without getting a reward, but he says they get there like one who escaped a fire smelling of smoke. Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. There, yeah. there, there will be nominal Christians, quote unquote. Depends on your definition of nominal, right? Mm-hmm. There will be nominal Christians that get in. Mm. They're not going to hear "Well done, good and faithful servant." Mm. And they're not getting a reward, but they will still have that eternal life. Mm-hmm. They will still be loved by Christ. They will still be redeemed of Christ, but they will have nothing nothing to show for it. I'm not saying we need to be working for the pride of it. But, you know, when you're serving God, what greater reward could there be than being acknowledged by God, hey... I saw what you did for me. I saw that you were chasing after my will. I saw that you wanted to please me. Mm. Not, you didn't want to please me to get into heaven. You wanted to please me because you were redeemed. Mm. And I, I, you, I acknowledge your work. Mm. Like what greater reward could there be? Amen. And I think like regardless of like the time, the time, mm-hmm. timing of like the rapture, I think, Everyone who's a Christian believes in Judgment Day, right? So mm-hmm. we know yeah. that we're all going to have to give an account regardless of like, you know. Um, so I think it's really important to be like mindful of that and to be like, to be cautious and to be like, um, just like very intentional about how we live our lives and um just like wanting to please god but not out of like wanting to please him because i want to gain something out of it or because i want to i think i have to prove myself to him but because like like you said i've been redeemed and so out of the love because of the love he he showed towards me i want to extend i want to extend that love back to him you know Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah, good answer, guys. Um, I was just thinking when, when we were talking, and I was thinking like the reward, and then you brought up rewards, which is really good. You know, you're th- reading when you read through these passages, and you think, you know, for a Christian, the, the fight that they're going to have to do is setting their mind on things above. Mm-hmm. That's a fight. Yeah. Because there's everything on this earth to distract you, especially now. I mean, not that what they went through. 2000 years ago was nothing that's not true but you know they didn't have cell phones Mm -hmm. so to distract like in our own home we have more things available to us that that can really pull our thoughts away uh if people disagree and want to argue fine but i'm not talking about at this table but maybe some people out there be like you don't know what they had 2000 years ago and that's true we don't know (laughs) because i wasn't there but you, you think about television you think about the internet this is so much like it just even when I think, um, like, when I was a kid growing up in the 90s, right? Like, just, I didn't have a cell phone or even the internet. There's just so much more, if we're not careful, that can really grab our attention. So that fight to set our mind on things above is real. And then, you know, like, we're knowing that we're dead in Christ, we're, uh, we're hid. That's still a fight. Like, fighting for our identity, fighting for who we are. It's not easy. This Christian walk is not easy. It is a life of sacrifice. Yeah. It's a life of commitment. And it's wonderful to know that at the end of it, there's reward. And it's Christ himself. The, our Savior who we pray to and we seek and we worship and we love. That at the end of all this, whether you're going down by the undertaker or the upper taker, <laughs> okay whether you're going in the box or you're getting called home w- that's the reward mm-hmm. is him mm-hmm. and i think that's exciting that that is motivation like if jesus being with jesus at the end of all this doesn't motivate you doesn't excite you in some way there's something that needs to be dealt with yeah. In your heart and life. It's not to throw you under the bus or to judge you. But you need to deal with that. Because if you're not excited about Jesus now, how are you going to be excited about Jesus in, in heaven? Yeah. Well, you're going to be the only one in heaven that's like, oh, we're going to worship God at the throne? Nah. No. 
That's not going to happen. You know, if I get concerned over people. It's like, well, I don't really like being around Christians now. I don't really like worshiping God now, but I'm still going to heaven. If you don't like being around Christians now, you don't like worshiping God now, you ain't going to like being in heaven. Heaven will not be heaven because it's, it's going to be believers. Hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those hypocrites, those people who fail all the time. Well, that's yep. fallen humanity, man. My favorite line is from Frank Turek on this subject. And he says, there are a lot of people that will refuse to go to church because of all the hypocrites. And I, Frank Turek, as he's saying this, will say, what do you mean? Of course it's full of hypocrites. We got room for one more. Come on. Ha ha ha. Everyone on earth is a hypocrite. There, There is no one that is 100% genuine. Yeah. Everyone has something that they expect of other people that they themselves are not willing to come through on. Mm -hmm. And that's the point. Humanity is fallen. The church is not saying you need to be perfect. The church is saying you need to be perfect and you can't. So turn to Christ because he is your only hope. To get to heaven, it's not a scale of good and evil and you just got to outweigh the bad. No. The expectation is perfection. If you cannot be absolutely sinlessly perfect from the moment you are conceived to the moment you die or are raptured, you cannot make it. God expects sinless perfection. Only Christ is able to attain that, and we can only attain that by being in Christ because of his sacrifice. He was perfect on our behalf. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, good answer. Okay, I have this question. I may have an answer. Well, for Melanie as well. <laughs> <laughs> I may not have an answer. <laughs> what? We'll see. We'll okay. see. Depends what it is. Um, so we know for sure Jesus is coming back. Yeah. And that is that is a core doctrine, by the way. Mm -hmm. And maybe that will be a core doctrine series in the future. We'll see. <laughs> uh, and... We know there's debates within the church world and apparently at this round table. Ooh. I was shocked to hear that, but. But I already told you. I don't know. Well, maybe. I already told you. But now here's the thing. There will be a rapture. Mm -hmm. yep. There will be a rapture and Christ will, he's going to come for his church, for his saints. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to come back with his saints at the second coming. Mm -hmm. Yep. And now all throughout scripture, we are given the promise of his coming, mm -hmm. that, that promise of re that Christ is coming back, the reward, mm -hmm. the eternal, uh, to, be, to be with him, number one, and then the kingdom of God that he's going to set up and, and to be with him forever as that promise is. But why do you think that, uh, and, and this is not a question regarding the timing of the rapture, but why do you think Christians struggle with like looking to Christ's coming as like motivation? Why do you think there's a struggle there just with that, with the struggle with, with embracing and even talking about, and I, we're not wanting to throw churches under the bus. No, no. There are actually quite a few churches out there that teach on Christ's imminent return mm -hmm. and on the second coming. But why do you think a lot of Christians struggle with that? Why do you think a lot of Christians, uh, they're, they're not being taught it or they're, or they, maybe they're being taught it and they're just ignoring it altogether. Mm -hmm. I think it's a mix of reasons. I think part of it is carnality. There are just some Christians, and whether you consider them Christians or not, that's not really the, the point of the, the conversation at the moment, but there are some Christians that are just carnal. It's not that they don't care about Christ, but it just doesn't come on their radar because they're too busy doing what they do. Mm -hmm. they're, they're too busy. The, some people are buried in their work. Some people are, you know, too busy partying it up. And I'm not saying necessarily that they're going to, like, you know, clubs or unholy parties. They may be, but, you know, I, I don't know about it. But, like, <laughs> What you kind know, of holy party do you go to? <laughs> but, like, they're, they're, they're busy doing their own thing. They're not, they're not taking the time to look for Christ. They they're like the the foolish uh the, the foolish virgins mm -hmm. in the parable, right? That's there good. were there were three virgins that were foolish and three that were wise. The three that were wise uh had their lamps and an extra cas casket of, of oil. And the foolish 
had their lamps, but they didn't have the oil. And when the evening came, they were waiting for, for the groom to come by. The, the, wise, the wise virgins had their lamps, and they had the extra oil to keep refilling. But the foolish virgins' lamps went out. And, you know, they said, hey, we need some of your oil. And the wise, the wise ladies said, sorry, we don't, we don't have enough to give you. You have to go into town and buy it. And by the time the groom came, they were too busy trying to find oil because they didn't, they weren't ready. And so they were left, they were left out because they were not ready when he came. And so there are some Christians out there that are just, they're not wise in terms of Christ's return. They're either ignorant or they just, they don't have the focus for it. They're not looking into it. They're not daily, like, expecting his return. They're just doing their own thing. And so they're just not ready, and and it stops them from being ready because it's not brought to their attention. They don't bring it to their own attention, and a lot of churches don't. And then there's the case of some that just don't care. Okay. I'll, I like what you said at the end because I feel at the, the beginning when you were talking about like Christians who do or people who say they're Christian and, and they're just living it up yeah. and it's like okay I, I don't I, I don't think everybody who isn't looking towards the rapture no, no. or the second coming Not all is doing that but then then at the end you said like like there are some that are just distracted and then there sure, are others yeah. that don't care yeah like and I think part of it part of it Yes. I'll well, make sure I'm very clear. So a it's portion not, of what we are talking about, yes, not the only. No, because then it's like, oh, you're broad brushing everybody. It's like, okay, easy, easy, easy. We're talking about a specific part. Um, you're right, and I, I mentioned earlier about Christians who say like struggle with reading the Word, and so if they're not in the Word, like really, like I'm not, you know, I know, like I think today a lot of Christians they'll, they'll do like a quick devotional thing, mm-hmm. but they're really not studying the word of god they're biblically illiterate right and i mean there was a poll that came out not that long ago where it was like 70 percent of apparent born again christians and i say apparent because we don't know if they're truly born again or not but people who identify as born again and this you know whole thing about identity in the united states believe there are other ways to heaven and that eliminates what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Wow. No man comes to the Father but by me. Yep. So, wow. I mean, that means that you have 70% of people who are going to what is called a born-again or evangelical church who are believing heretical teaching. Yep. So if they can't even get salvation right, well, they're not going to get the second coming. Mm-hmm. Forget that. No. Mm-hmm. I really like what you were saying, and I kind of want to build off it. When I was like much younger in my faith, probably... Um, when I was in high school, I used to say to my best friend at the time, we used to say, God, uh, Jesus, please don't come back before I get married. <laughs> so there was this thought like amongst like Christian girls, and I've actually seen a meme of this. I've seen YouTube videos about this. It's, c- it's very common in the Christian mm-hmm. community. Um, and so, yeah, obviously among like single women. And, and so, some men too. And some men too. I don't want to, you know, generalize but um i have seen that very often so i like what you said about people being distracted like we're not focusing on the right thing and so these verses in Col- in colossians are perfect for that because yeah we have to set our minds on things that are above not on earthly things god did not promise us marriage um and he didn't promise us that we would get married before he comes back what yeah did you know uh, i don't know <laughs> So I just, I really, I really like this. And I like what you said because it just ties it, everything together. And um, yeah, I had to process that in my mind. Like once I was like reading scriptures and once I was like learning more about Christ, like, okay, well, Jesus doesn't promise me marriage. So like, why am I expecting this from him mm-hmm. if, you know? Um, so I think we have to be very careful in wishing for certain things. Um, because it's not promised to us and mm-hmm. Jesus will come back when he chooses to, when the, when the father says he's going to. Yeah. So, but I think that's part of why Christ says, Hey, seek ye first the kingdom of mm-hmm. God Amen. and his righteousness. Right. Because if we're not seeking him first, 
then we're going to be distracted. If you don't have that dedication right off the bat from the moment you get up, Lord, help me to seek you, help me to seek after righteousness, help me to live a holy life as you expect me to, mm. and forgive me when I fall. If we don't have that mindset, and I'm saying we, including myself in that, I don't pray this every morning, mm. but Christ gives that expectation of us. He says, hey, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything else that you need will be taken care of. That's why he says it, right? Because we are so easily distracted. Mm. I know that if I don't have a to-do list in my brain, I don't have to write it down all the time, but if I don't have, this is what I got to take care of today, right. something will get lost yeah. and fall through the cracks. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I forgot to pick up toothpaste again because I didn't have it on the list. Right. Or, oh, I bought too much ice cream we didn't need another tub of ice cream we have one in the fridge like oh no you know seek first the kingdom of god mm. and everything else will be added to you and you don't have to worry about distraction Amen. because you'll be focused like obviously there are things on the earth you need to worry about yes you need to get a job <laughs> yes you need to get an income so you can pay rent and get groceries yes you need to make sure you treat your wife or husband with respect and children. yes you, yes Sometimes. <laughs> Ooh, easy tiger. Wheel it in. Wheel it all. He's gone. He's gone. I'm joking, obviously. I I'm hope joking. so. Here come the letters. Yes, Read Ephesians even, 6. <laughs> even, even children need respect. But, like, yes, there are things here on the earth you need to focus on. That's not what that verse means. It's not saying, oh, you're, you're uh, uh, so heaven-focused that you're of no earthly good. Like, obviously, you need to pay attention to what you need to take care of here. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But do everything as though you are doing it for the Lord. Amen. Not That's exactly him. what I was thinking, Ezra. When you're at work and you hate your job, don't sit there and whine about it to your coworkers. Don't badmouth your employer behind your back. What you need to do is, one, remember that ultimately Christ is your, your employer. Mm. You are a slave of Christ if you are a Christian. This is good stuff, Ezra. Keep going. Your first duty is to the Lord. Preach it, brother. And if you wouldn't talk about God the way you talk about your employer, don't do it. Yep. That's good. Yeah. If you wouldn't do something on God's watch, and let me remind you, Christ is omnipresent, omniscient. He sees everything, and he knows what you're thinking. Yeah. If you would not do something in the presence of Christ physically, don't do it at work. Amen. Don't do it in your free time. Remember mm. that God is there. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. If you would not do something with your parents in the room, or your wife, or your children, or your best friend, or Jesus himself, if you would not do Ooh. something with any of those people in the room, reconsider what you're doing. Amen, brother. Seek ye first the kingdom of God like that. Yeah. and his righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's it. Got to have that proper focus. Okay, we don't just live for ourselves. We don't just live for ourselves. And, you know, we live for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He died for us. He purchased us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're part of the purchased possession. Amen, amen, and yeah. amen. And everything we have comes from Him anyways. Right? Yes. So, if you're struggling with identity, and we all to degrees will, seek the Lord. Oh, Greg, how could you just say pray it all away? Uh, hello. <laughs> you are connecting and are in communion with the great I am, mm -hmm. with the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending, the God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. Yep. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He spoke all of this into existence. So, yes, I'm going to pray. When people yep. say, oh, I'm just going to pray it away, I don't think they understand who they're praying to. Where's our focus? Our focus needs to be on Jesus Christ. Yeah. Our focus needs to be on him. And the fact that he's coming back shows that he is in control. He has a divine plan. And all of this that we put our trust in and we enjoy and we, you know, sit around in and bog down and just, you know, live it up for tomorrow we die. That's all going to be done away with. Yep. So put your focus in Christ. Now, there's so much more that we want to get into, but that's going to be for the next podcast. We will continue doing chapter four, verse four, chapter three. Next time. Next time. On the Fancy, on the Files, Fancy Files, Files podcast. So, 
I am your host, Greg the Scots. And I have with me today Ezra Soros Rex. Thank you very much, Ezra. Always a pleasure, sir. <laughs> Good. Reporting for duty. I like that. And of course, the Melsons. Melflow. Oh. Everyone's going to be like, what's that? Mean? It's like, that's a story for another day, children. Thank you very much, and God bless. Merci, Gregory.